this video has been in the making for a very long time but speaking on Madbox and leaving 3d's max and maya out was a bit challenging and that's exactly what i wanted to achieve a Madbox video without having to speak on any of Autodesk's product. If you are into digital sculpting, then you certainly are either using Madbox, ZBrush or 3D Code. These are the best you would get on the market right now, in my opinion. Before we begin with Madbox vs ZBrush, I would like us to talk of memory optimization. Memory optimization is really important in many cases, especially in the 3D field, so it's better to speak on it before we get into other subjects. Inside of ZBrush, most of the tasks such as sculpting, dynamation, and subdividing tools will only use the CPU for very short periods. We call it burst. Depending on the CPU you choose, particularly Ryzen, your memory transfer speed can affect how ZBrush performs. So fast memory is crucial. ZBrush doesn't really care if you are a starter with a low-end machine or not. And for this reason, a fairly decent PC will be required if you really want to build a career with ZBrush. For starters, I would recommend a minimum 8GB amount of memory. This will only be for a short while because the more you advance, the more your demands will grow, thus making 8GB not so useful after a long run. RAMs aren't that expensive, so it will be a smart move to start making preparations for 16GB of RAMs immediately. These are the average spec and best price to performance configuration for ZBrush you would get out there. Advanced users should be aiming at 32GB and above RAM. Whilst upgrading your RAM, kindly you make sure your CPU has the capacity to contain the memory limit, else you are going to be facing bottleneck issues somewhere above 50 million polygons. This normally happens if you are running 32 gigabytes and above RAM coupled with a low to mid-range CPU. If you are planning on getting a high-end CPU that flows really well with ZBrush, I would advise you consider AMD's Ryzen 7 to 9 and above as well as Intel Core i7 to i9 CPUs. They are very efficient with ZBrush. Sculpting in ZBrush wouldn't require a GPU but this doesn't mean you don't need a GPU in your computer. You do need a GPU and this is the main reason. Task offload. Having a GPU in your machine will help offload most of the GPU accelerator task you open, thus giving your CPU more room to process ZBrush only. This prevents unnecessary lag issues, but if you live in a super outcast location and can't have access to a GPU, then kindly consider a CPU with an integrated GPU. It's very important. What about Madbox? Someone might ask. Madbox takes on a completely different build if you should consider it. The software takes advantage of your computer's CPU speed, RAM, and graphics card memory to let you work with extremely high resolution polygonal models and produce high quality rendering and visual effects in real time. But the size of your GPU doesn't really matter all too much. The only time the GPU comes in handy is when you need to navigate the viewport and the interface. All other calculations are done on the CPU. A 4GB VRAM will be a decent amount for starters, but in reality, it all depends on what you will be doing within Madbox. If you want to have a lot of individual objects in your viewport, then you would have to aim higher than 4GB VRAM. Maybe a 12GB VRAM will be okay, coupled with a 16-32GB to of RAM will be good in most cases, it doesn't matter if you are a starter, these are the minimal specs um, to aim for if you want to have optimal performance within Madbox. Hey, Madbox is a performance hungry kit, especially if you begin to go back and forth within Maya and 3D's Max. If you want to make a career out of Madbox, at some point you will realize Madbox alone isn't enough for you, an additional support will be needed in such cases and those additional support would either be Maya or 3 d marks. I guess Autodesk beat us to the game. Now you have to pay for more if you want to do more. Okay, let's get into it. Madbox vs ZBrush Sculpting Madbox was keen in the 2010s, but somewhere around 2012, the software stopped receiving updates. ZBrush, on the other hand, has been receiving tons of updates and has now become the industry's main go-to sculpting tool due to its available features and its ease of use. Yes, 
it's not friendly in the beginning but you get used to it over time and it's the best look madbox today still doesn't feel like an old software it's still powerful and has all you need to complete a sculpting and texturing project very stable and it's also the easiest sculpting tool you would ever come across on the market just lacking some newer features that could have given it a little boost i wish sky matter had not sold it to autodesk madbox is a complete 3d sculpting tool but the number of shapes to sculpt is limited the software uses more computational power which is a cost for gaining a full 3d advantage if you are into game development sorry you might have to look somewhere else Madbox is not for you, but ZBrush is because of its ability to sculpt on 2.5D and 3D models. There are two options to think through before sculpting. You either modify an existing object or create a brand new one from scratch. The most difficult one in any aspect is always beginning from scratch, but ZBrush makes that process much easier easier with the help of a tool called Zsphere. Before I continue, let me show you a video of how Zsphere was used on the build-up process of the dragons in the Game of Thrones series. I built that gigantic thing in this little tiny bedroom. This is Dan Ketcher, the self-proclaimed father of dragons, and he's the man responsible for designing these iconic creatures for one of the biggest shows in television history. It all starts with a sketch, like this early drawing of Drogon, but it's not just about sketching. Catcher creates detailed models that he sends to HBO for approval, models that have to take into account the proportions of the dragons, which grew from tiny to massive during the run of the show, how the creatures would work inside and out, and every single detail down to the individual scales. To do this, Catcher used a program called ZBrush. The first step for creating one of his 3D models is creating the proportions of the creatures using elements called Z-spheres. Before he can think about how the creature will look, he has to create the basic infrastructure for how it will work. Pretty soon, you see the basic building blocks of a dragon. Catcher then creates an internal structure, or skeleton. He lays out bones that will be connected to muscle, establishing the physical dynamics of how this creature will move, and eventually, fly. An understanding of physiology and anatomy is crucial to Catcher's designs, many of which are inspired by real-life animals. In the skeleton itself, I've mixed all these animals together, so you've got bat wings that are in the bone. If you are into creating organic models, especially starting ground-up concepts that are solely yours and not a modified download, Zsphere is where to begin from. Now, if you've never used ZBrush before, well, this is how Zsphere works. It gives you the advantage of creating a basic sketch of your model. Then you refine and shape the sketch until it becomes a fully formed mesh object that is ready for sculpting. You are done. This tool is particularly awesome if you don't have too much experience in model creation. Remind you, you've not begun sculpting yet. All these tools are simply meant to make sketching, shaping, and forming a mesh object and modeling easy as possible. Madbox, on the other hand, is not as good as ZBrush when it comes to making meshes. In Madbox, you don't have many options to choose from when working on meshes. For this reason, Madbox users mostly make meshes elsewhere, then later on import it into Madbox for sculpting. Autodesk users might not really find this process to be complicated because Madbox has better integration with both Maya and 3ds Max. I think I spoke on this particular situation very well in this video, link also in my description below. If you are going to be using Madbox alone, then it's 100% sure you wouldn't find modeling and mesh making to be fun because it's very limited. All the advanced features to make it more fun are all kept in either 3ds Max or Maya. So yeah, it's called business tactics. Blender does so well with mesh modeling, but I don't know how well it works with Madbox. If you have any advice on Madbox to Blender and vice versa, kindly leave it in the comment section below. I would be grateful to see how it works because I personally think a Madbox to Blender combo will be awesome. Look, we can argue on the differences Madbox and ZBrush possess, but one thing we all need to pay attention to are the sculpting tools offered by both programs. ZBrush's main advertising point is sculpting, same with Madbox. So now, which is the best sculpting tool? There are two key features Madbox users acknowledge so much, and that is the grab brush 
and the wax brush. These brushes allows you to move and build up geometry respectively. The grab brush is used for moving the surface of the model whilst the wax brush is used for adding materials to the model. Compared to ZBrush, Matbox's brush parameters are limited. However, Matbox excels in its accessibility to vector displacement map and stamps. These maps enable you to have more control over your object with speed and ease when creating creases and undercuts. Matbox is the easiest and friendliest sculpting tool you would find on the market. The brushes you find in Matbox compared to ZBrush is minimal, but the unique thing is Matbox focused on perfecting the most common brushes every digital sculptor will need and made it super accurate and top notch. Moving on to ZBrush, I would say ZBrush on all levels handles sculpting the best, can chew through polish like nothing else and the brush engine is just the best out there in terms of customization, control and feel. But when it comes to accuracy, Matbox is the clear winner. ZBrush has a vast number of readily available custom brushes and you can access more of them through the Lightbox browser. Apart from the number of brushes you have in the library, the control you gain over the brushes is incredible. There are numerous options to modify your parameters of brushes. You get used to its way of sculpting over time, though it's not that friendly from the beginning. Now, what about texture painting? Texture painting is something I can't skip, though the main topic is sculpting. Also, it's not really necessary for one to texture within their main sculpting tool simply because the tool offers it. Most sculpting packages suck at texturing, and ZBrush is a typical example. Aside the standard way of texturing, which includes UV unwrapping, ZBrush chose to go with a technique called poly painting. Now, with the poly painting technique, Textures use the complexity of the polygon mesh. In this case, the higher the polygon count on your mesh, the higher quality you attain in texture painting. The downside to this feature is its inability to bring out great texture paint for models in low resolution. Such a massive disadvantage, but it's got some good sides also to it, and that is texture painting without having to UV map. This saves texture artists the time and effort typically required if you are to go by the standard way of texturing. Also, it simplifies the process for artists who don't want to spend hours UV unwrapping. This way of texturing wouldn't be suitable for most projects, but if you are mainly texturing for some type of artistic purpose, then you can go with texturing without UV unwrapping. So what about Matbox? Texture painting in Matbox is super advanced. It offers the traditional full-length layer-based texturing workflow, which comes in handier and easier to control than ZBrush. Matbox offers the standard texture management system that allows you to manage large texture maps and also offers UV-free painting, which allows artists to start the painting process without having to UV unwrap just like ZBrush's poly painting. In Matbox, every map is assigned material and every material can have multiple layers together. The standard way of texturing you find in almost all the best texturing app began with Matbox, but it's sad Autodesk failed to build more into it. The additional advantage of working in Matbox is you can see the effect of your paintings live whilst you are painting. It applies to every material. I wouldn't speak on PTEX because it's a whole topic on its own, but it's one of the main strong features you would find within Matbox. Should we speak about retopology? Retopology. Hey, I'm kind of old fashioned, but it's okay. Mm, I don't think so, but it's kind of important because the most crucial part of using a sculpting software is to obtain a full sculpted and painted topology. It's the topology that enhances the look and feel of the sculpted and textured models. Both ZBrush and Matbox takes different approaches when creating a ready-to-use topology from a sculpt. ZBrush uses the ZRemesher tool to create its topology, whereas Matbox uses a feature called Retopologize. Though ZBrush has a little excess feature when compared to Matbox, it is mainly because the software was designed years before Matbox entered the market. And I don't think there's too much to speak on Retopo, it's just a simple technique that doesn't require too much um, effort. Um, between ZBrush and Matbox, I 
think they both do great but if you really want to read topo on a more advanced level you should try 3d code the final step in sculpting is the calculation of normal maps from your high resolution sculpted objects to retopologized low resolution models which are then going to be used in the production process zbrush is a little different than other 3d programs when it comes to map baking it uses a unique but a somewhat weird way of baking you begin with subdividing the polygonal mesh and input the details into the same subdivided geometry then you calculate the normals and displacement maps on the final geometry the process is confusing and funny enough it's only zbrush that uses this technique of baking meanwhile matte boxes baking process is way easier and flexible to use with matte box you can choose to use the same geometry and work on different levels on it or you may even work on an entirely new geometry some baking settings are also saved automatically for reuse allowing you to access all the options readily as you fixed them previously choosing between zbrush and matte box shouldn't be a difficult decision at all you first of all need to consider the kind of project you are going to work on and see which software fix perfectly for that purpose if you are a professional 3ds max or maya user then matbox will come in handy it's both cpu and gpu dependent also average machines would have to be upgraded if you are going to be working on matbox professionally you don't get any new updates no new tools functions brushes nothing although it's much stable than zbrush and also offers live preview when texturing meanwhile zbrush is cpu only base can work on higher number of polygons with average machine specs has a lot of features and constantly keeps receiving updates also you get a lot of export options thus having the ability to work with any industry software there is more but i think these few tips are mostly what you should look into and use as the main basis of your judgment when choosing between zbrush and matbox okay if you love this video then the sub to my channel will be